trust is inherent to any human relationship, you know, whether it's a pair of friends or whether it's a business and a customer. And throughout most of history, they were the same. You would trust a business because you trust the business owner. Right? You'd walk into a shop, you'd meet the owner, and you'd buy bread or meat or cheese. That works, but that doesn't scale. As soon as you have a business that's larger than one person, larger than one shop, you need to establish the trust separate from the people. And suddenly you have brands. That doesn't work as well on the internet. As you move brands to the internet, all of the trappings of trust can easily be replicated. Right? If I'm a hacker, I can take the bank's website, copy it completely, and then use it for my own purposes. So the things you see, the visual cues you might see to get trust from the bank, no longer work. Because on the internet, you can easily copy anything. Most of our normal human markers for trust fail. And that means brand and trust are very fragile on the net because they can so easily be hacked. On the internet, you need brands more than ever because you have so little else. So brands are really important on the net. They're more fragile, but they're, they're, they're vital. Complexity is the worst enemy of security. As a system gets more complex, it gets less secure. And I think this explains one of the seeming paradoxes of computer security. Why is it getting worse? Those of us in computers are used to things getting better naturally. As computers get faster, as software gets better, whether it's graphics rendering or word processing or, or printing, you wait a few generations and it'll get better. But security is getting worse. I think complexity explains that. Because we are getting better at security technology. Security is improving, but complexity is getting worse faster. So we lose ground even as we improve. Network security is really a combination of technology, people, and processes. You need all three, but you need technology because it's a technological system. You cannot defend your network without firewalls, IDSs, monitoring systems, host uh, protection systems. But none of those will work unless you have people. People to install, to configure, to monitor, to update, to respond. And unless you have processes by which the people will interact with the technology to do that. So you need technology, people, and processes. You can't just use technology. You know, smart security is risk management. Right? Security is always a trade-off. You get something and you give something up. So the question to ask isn't, is this security thing good? The question is, is it worth it? And that's what risk management is. Right? How do I best manage my risk? And banks are really good at this. Right? They will look at a security countermeasure and say, how much does it cost and how much does it save me? And if it saves me more than it costs, I'll buy it. And if it costs more than it saves me, I won't. Too much security isn't good, it's too expensive. Just like too little security isn't good, it's too expensive. And that's risk management. How do I find the sweet spot where my business is the most profitable? Not that I'm the most secure, not that I'm spending the least money, that my business is the most profitable. I'll tell you the secret. As computer scientists, we have no clue how to write secure software. There is no theory. You know, we have a lot of tricks, we have a lot of ideas, there are things we can do that are clever, but we're really, we're just making it up. And software is inherently filled with bugs. You know, I've seen estimates that it's one bug per 10 lines of code. And if you look at an operating system like Windows, which might have 50 million lines of code, you have an enormous number of bugs. You know, most of the bugs are things that'll never happen. Most of the bugs have no security implications. But enough of them do. And remember, these aren't random bugs. There's an attacker. Now, you know, you sort of think of, of Murphy's Law, right? Random things can go wrong. So if there are random bugs, then there'll be random problems at random times, and it won't be good. Attackers are different. Attackers will search out for particular bugs and make things fail in just the perfect way to cause just the right amount of damage at just the wrong time. So instead of Murphy's Law, you have what you can think of as Satan's law, an intelligent and malicious adversary looking for the exact bug. So even bugs that wouldn't be a problem in a random environment can become a problem in a malicious environment. 
Security has three aspects, protection, detection, and response. And you need all three. So protection would be a door lock. Detection would be a burglar alarm. Response would be the police who come after it rings. When you buy a safe, that safe comes with a rating. And a rating can be 30 TL, and that means 30 minutes tools, or 60 TLTR, 60 minutes tools and torch. And what that means is a burglar with the right tools and an oxyacetylene torch is getting into that safe in 60 minutes. So if you don't have an alarm that rings and guards that come running, you're not getting full value of the safe. Right? All the safe buys you is that hour. If you don't have detection or response, then you don't, the hour doesn't buy you anything. We have no idea how to build computer protections good enough that you don't need detection or response. Every single security product ever invented, there are ways around it. Nothing is perfect. If you don't have detection or response, you're, you're really, you don't even know how good your security is. We like to monitor everything. But the easy thing to monitor is the perimeter, the firewalls, the IDSs. But honestly, that's not nearly enough. What you need to monitor are the assets. Right? They're the targets. The perimeter is just the vector by which the attacker gets to them. But the databases, the file servers, the thing the attacker wants, that's what you need to monitor. This is subtle. I mean, this isn't easy. But whenever someone attacks you, they leave footprints. All of these products have audit logs and they produce audit message. Millions of messages a day. Most of them are complete waste of time, you know, printer out of toner, so what? But some of them are very important. In those audit logs are footprints of attacks. And if you can monitor those in real time, you can watch the attacker as he's attacking. And if you could understand what's going on fast enough, you can kick him out before he does damage. Monitoring is hard. It takes expertise to separate the real attacks from the false alarms, to know what to do, to know how to do it, to understand what you're looking at and how to respond. And you can buy that expertise. I mean, it's possible to hire someone to do this. Uh, it's expensive. We're talking 24 by 7 monitoring, so that requires five to seven people. It requires very specialized knowledge. It requires them to understand attacks. So while you can do it, it's much more cost effective and you get better service by outsourcing it. Security is about the result. You know, when I buy security, I don't want to buy a thing. I want to buy being secure. And at the industry, we've been good at selling things, right? Here's your antivirus. Here's your firewall. And that thing doesn't make you secure. It's how you use the thing. So given that how it's used, how it's installed is so important, we either have to give you the expertise to do it yourself or turn it into a service where we do it for you. But because security is really about results and not about the products, services is a much more natural way to deliver what it is the customer actually wants. On the internet, security is vigilance. Right? Attacks happen at any time. They happen from any direction. They happen through any technique. And you have to pay attention to them all. I mean, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know when they're coming. And that's why it's hard to do it yourself. I mean, you can't be vigilant. I mean, your job is, is what you do. You don't have the expertise, the manpower, the equipment, the operations center. Vigilance is what we do. I mean, it's what the company was built to do. It's what the systems were built to do. BT Counterpain is a managed security service provider. We do is we make companies secure. We don't make security products, we make them work. We monitor networks, we watch what's going on in real time, we scan for vulnerabilities, we look for attacks, we can maintain different security products. We make security work. At BT Counterpain, we have people who see attacks 24 hours a day, seven days a week, attack after attack after attack. So what would be rare and scary to you is commonplace to us. But if we're monitoring hundreds of networks, thousands of networks, it's steady state. So it becomes routine. And you really need routine when you're looking at these sorts of attacks. Because if you've never seen it before, you don't know what to do. If we've seen it before, we can do it.